aspartame does not raise insulin. Whenever I do videos about aspartame or any artificial sweetener, it gets like the most vitriolic reactions. Other than anti-seed oil people, anti-aspartame, anti-artificial sweetener people are the loudest bunch of uninformed folks on the planet. So there was a recent, not even a study, it was presented at a scientific symposium. It has not been published in peer review yet, demonstrating that diet soda consumption or artificial sweetener consumption is associated with type 2 diabetes incidence. And when people are asked to explain the association, it's, well, artificial sweeteners, since your brain senses the sweet taste, it causes you to release insulin. Well, a new study has just put the nail in the coffin of that theory. First of all, why are artificial sweeteners associated with type 2 diabetes? This doesn't surprise me at all. They're also associated with obesity, which has led people to be like, see, they cause you to be fat. This is a case of what we call reverse causation. Because if we look at the human randomized controlled trials, what happens when they give artificial sweetened beverages in place of sugar sweetened beverages people lose substantial weight. And in fact, artificially sweetened diet beverages outperform water for weight loss when compared to substitution for sugar sweetened beverages. Probably because people who may be used to sugar sweetened beverages might be pursuing that sweet taste elsewhere and consuming more calories. Unless you want to argue that artificial sweeteners are fat burners, which would be, which would be fun too. But they're not. But I do find it interesting that much of the rhetoric around artificial sweeteners is you don't want to consume them because they raise insulin and they mess up your insulin sensitivity and it's gonna make you gain weight because they raise your insulin and it's gonna make you hungrier because they raise your insulin. A new meta-analysis of human randomized controlled trials looked at aspartame and whether or not it affects blood glucose responses, insulin response, appetite, energy intake, and appetite-related hormones. This was a huge meta-analysis. In fact, they actually did like multiple meta-analyses within this paper. Over a hundred studies were included. And in the short-term responses, they did four different meta-analyses for short-term responses of blood glucose and insulin in people consuming aspartame. And they looked at aspartame versus different comparators. So basically like aspartame versus a vehicle, meaning when you give aspartame, you can give it in a capsule, you can give it in the powder form, you can give it as drops, you can give it as a tablet, you can put it in a drink, whatever the vehicle was. So if it was, if they were looking at aspartame in a drink, they also gave the placebo group a drink without aspartame. If they put it in a tablet, the placebo group was getting a tablet without aspartame. So basically, aspartame versus vehicle. Then they also looked at aspartame versus other low calorie sweeteners, sucralose, monk fruit, stevia, those sorts of things. Then they looked at aspartame versus sweet tasting sugars. Then they also looked at aspartame versus non-sweet tasting carbohydrates. And then finally, they looked at aspartame versus other nutritive components, fats, proteins, as part of like a complete meal, as part of a food, all different kinds of things. And so they looked at, okay, where were their greater responses for glucose and insulin? And basically what they found was pretty similar for both glucose and insulin with a slight difference. For glucose, they found that aspartame had no effect when compared to no aspartame. People who didn't get aspartame versus those who did, neither had a glucose response. Big shocker. Then if they looked at aspartame versus other low calorie sweeteners, no difference in glucose response. Neither one caused a glucose response. Then if they looked at aspartame versus sweet tasting sugars, sweet tasting sugars had a much bigger glucose response versus aspartame because again, aspartame is not increasing blood glucose, whereas sweet tasting sugars are. Then they found the same thing against non-sweet carbohydrates, the same thing against nutritive components. So aspartame did not cause a glucose response. The only thing that caused glucose responses were sweet tasting sugars, non-sweet tasting carbohydrate, and the nutritive components. Then when it came to insulin, they found the same thing. No insulin response. The only difference was versus other low calorie sweeteners, they did see a small difference in insulin with people getting aspartame having a little bit more insulin. Now, here's why I'm not concerned about that. One, we've already shown that aspartame alone does not cause an insulin response because when they compared it to vehicle alone, there was no response. Why might there be a difference between other low calorie sweeteners? Well, 
There was only four studies included in that meta-analysis, so the sample size was pretty small. And there was one or two studies that really showed the difference. And I'm guessing maybe in those studies, those artificial sweeteners, or actually they weren't artificial, they were non-nutritive sweeteners because they were monk fruit extract and stevia, perhaps they actually make insulin go down a little bit. So it was a small difference, but I'm pointing it out for the sake of being accurate. But again, aspartame compared to vehicle, no aspartame, no increase in insulin. And then when they looked at moderate term studies, they found more of the same. When they looked at long term studies, they found more of the same. So when they looked at appetite regulating hormones like GLP 1, there was really no difference between groups. They didn't find an effect of aspartame. Now, when it came to appetite and energy intake, the responses mostly mirrored the results from glucose and insulin. So people who consumed aspartame actually ended up eating less calories than people who were not consuming aspartame. And they actually had lower ratings of appetite. This completely explains why aspartame or people who consume artificially sweetened beverages lose weight compared to sugar sweetened beverages. It also, by the way, completely buries and burns the idea that aspartame increases insulin and that's going to make you hungry. It obviously does not because people lose weight when they consume artificially sweetened beverages with aspartame in place of sugar sweetened beverages. They lose weight and they lose even more weight compared to people who consumed water. So in order for you to make the argument work that aspartame is gonna make you hungry because it raises insulin, the only alternative that can possibly be true is aspartame is a really good fat burner, which it's not. It doesn't increase fat burning. They also looked at the number of adverse events reported in these studies. Oh, and big shocker, no difference in adverse event reporting compared to placebo with aspartame. And they even had a study where they took people who said they were aspartame sensitive. So these were people who said they would get headaches or, or tummy aches or whatever it was when they consume aspartame. And they blinded them by either putting aspartame in a cereal bar or sweetening it with something else in a cereal bar, like regular sugar. And what did they find? No difference in adverse event reports, which suggests that this may be an effect of placebo. You hear that aspartame is gonna give you a headache, you hear it's gonna cause all these problems, and so then you end up feeling like you have these problems. They also looked at medium and long-term studies in people who had type 2 diabetes and saw basically the exact same effects as they did in healthy subjects. There were also medium-term studies, which were up to 30 days, and these studies ranged from 15 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day to 45 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day, which is between seven to 26 cans of Diet Coke per day, just to understand how much aspartame this is. No effects on glucose and insulin, HbA1c, and no difference in adverse event reporting. Now, they also looked at long-term studies, which were over 30 days. Basically, the summation of those is they saw no differences in people consuming aspartame in terms of insulin sensitivity, HbA1c, adverse event reporting, uh, appetite regulating hormones. They did see a difference in energy intake and appetite with better results in people consuming aspartame versus people not consuming aspartame. Or if they consume saccharin as a low calorie sweetener, they actually had better ratings with aspartame compared to saccharin. Saccharin does appear to be unique as a sweetener. There's some weird results with it. I don't recommend it as a sweetener. Probably better than regular sugar, but it's definitely not as good as some of the other artificial sweeteners. And oh, by the way, the ratings of hunger and energy intake were not just better compared to sugar sweetened beverages, they were better compared to water as well. And one long-term experiment used a high dose of aspartame, 2,700 milligrams per day, which is equivalent to about 15 Diet Cokes per day for over a month long. And this was in type 2 diabetic people and saw no differences, no changes in insulin sensitivity, insulin levels, or glucose responses. So again, it is time to take this myth that aspartame causes these problems, whack it over the head, put it in a coffin, burn the coffin, and bury it deep beneath the earth's crust. It is not freaking true. It's just not true. And I could go into a whole other slew of things about how most of the stuff about aspartame out there is just BS because let's go, let's just go through aspartame metabolism real quick. So aspartame is 200 times sweeter than sugar. So you need only a small amount of it to sweeten whatever you're sweetening. So for example, in a Diet Coke, there's about 184 milligrams of aspartame. Now aspartame 
does not get into your bloodstream and it does not get into your tissues. There's no documented cases I'm aware of where they've shown aspartame in any tissue or the blood because it is completely and rapidly metabolized in your gastrointestinal tract into three things, into about 50% phenylalanine, 40% aspartic acid, and 10% methanol. Aspartic acid and phenylalanine are amino acids. And you get 20, 30 times more phenylalanine and aspartic acid eating a steak than you do from aspartame. So let's just put that to the side because if you're concerned about aspartame because of phenylalanine and uh, aspartic acid, then you better really be concerned about any kind of protein source. In fact, the labels on the side of Diet Coke or any diet soda, for example, talk about people with PKU, which is an inborn error of metabolism where phenylalanine cannot be converted to tyrosine and people who have this error, phenylalanine can build up to dangerous levels in the blood, negatively affect the brain and cause all kinds of neurotoxicity. Normal people don't need to worry about this. They've actually done studies in people with PKU. In fact, one of the studies included in this was in people with PKU and they actually saw no negative effects using aspartame because it's such a small amount of phenylalanine. So let's just not worry about the two amino acids since you get way more from any other source of protein in general. Now, the methanol. So that, that sounds scary. That sounds really scary. Do levels of methanol that you could get from aspartame consumption actually make a cause for concern? So first off, it's important to realize your body makes methanol naturally. You get more methanol, way more methanol, from various fruits and vegetables and alcohol consumption than you can ever get from aspartame. But let's just, let's just play it out. Let's just play it out. There was a study where they gave 4,800 milligrams of aspartame over an eight-hour period. That is equivalent to about 26 Diet Cokes over an eight-hour period. They saw no concerning rise in methanol in the blood. They also saw no increase in formate because to metabolize methanol, which your body does metabolize it out of your system, it doesn't accumulate. To metabolize methanol, it is converted to formaldehyde, then to formate or formic acid, and then it's metabolized out of the body as carbon dioxide. They saw no increase outside the normal range in methanol levels in the blood or formic acid levels in the blood. And that is with 26 Diet Cokes in an eight-hour time period, or the equivalent of 26 Diet Cokes in an eight-hour time period. So if aspartame is going to cause all these problems that everybody claims, how is it doing it? How is it? Because it's not raising methanol levels in the blood, and aspartame itself, the molecule itself, doesn't even get into circulation. It's completely and rapidly metabolized. It's never been found in the blood or any tissues. So somebody please explain to me how it is doing all these horrible things. But I'm sure the people in the comments of this video will come up with mental gymnastics to explain how it's happening. All right, I'm out.